Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The SR-71, also known as Blackbird, was a retired reconnaissance aircraft developed by Lockheed Corporation. During missions, the SR-71 was capable of operating at high speeds of up to Mach 3.2, and high altitudes of up to 85,000 feet, allowing it to evade or outtrace threats. Its survivability can be estimated from the fact that if any surface-to-air missile was detected mid-air, the SR-71 used standard evasive action to accelerate and outpace the missile. The SR-71's first flight took place on the 22nd of December, 1964, at United States Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. During initial testing, the aircraft reached a top speed of Mach 3.4, exceeding the design team's expectations. Moreover, pilot major Brian Scholl reported a speed in excess of Mach 3.5 while evading a missile over Libya. Only 32 SR-71s were ever constructed. Surprisingly, all of these aircraft survived their duties and were placed in aerospace museums throughout the 1990s and early 2000s. The SR-71 was a military spy plane that was solely built to fly at supersonic speeds. But have you ever wondered why commercial aircraft don't fly that fast? The reason is quite simple. Supersonic flights create loud, startling sonic booms that would disturb the communities below. For almost 50 years, the U.S. and several other nations have banned all civilian supersonic flights over land. Some research suggested that it is possible to soften the impact of supersonic flight. Therefore, NASA, along with Lockheed Martin, developed a solution by modifying the X-59 aircraft in its quiet supersonic technology. Quest Mission NASA's X-59 is designed to fly faster than sound but with drastically reduced noise so that the people below would hear sonic thumps rather than booms. The initial structure of this particular X-59 was developed at Lockheed Martin in Palmdale, California. The X-59 team simultaneously developed the plane's wing section, forebody, and impenage. The forebody section carries the pilot and the avionics needed to fly the aircraft, whereas the impenage supports the engine and other flight systems. The wing section is considered the structural backbone of the aircraft, which is why the X-59 team closed parts of the wing's interior that were intended never to be touched again by human hands. Although it's too big of a risk to move any section of the body within the facility, the wings were nevertheless moved during the final assembly with utmost care to keep their structural integrity intact. The F-14 GE-100 engine installation marked a major milestone in the X-59's journey toward the first flight. Prior to installation, a 3D engine scan helped engineers better understand the engine bay. The installation of the engine brought the aircraft close to the completion of its assembly.
This extraordinary engine packs 22,000 pounds of propulsion energy and powers the X-59 in flight at speeds up to Mach 1.4 and altitudes up to 55,000 feet. The next step was the final installation of X-59's lower impenage, better known as the tail assembly, which allowed the team to continue final wiring and system checkouts on the aircraft. The team also attached and tested out the positioning of the nose of the aircraft and performed a system check on the ejection seat to confirm it fit properly with no cockpit obstructions should the pilot need to eject. The X-59 was moved to Lockheed Martin in Fort Worth, Texas to conduct a series of ground tests, such as structural and fuel calibration tests. However, it was later brought back to Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works facility in Palmdale, California, where it was removed from the back of its transport and lowered to the ground using a crane. The Lockheed Martin engineers immediately unwrapped the aircraft for final integration and taxi testing. A sonic boom is a sound associated with shock waves created when an aircraft travels faster than the speed of sound. It is particularly loud and startling, tends to scare people, and can cause minor damage to some structures. In order to test the ability of the X-59 aircraft to make sonic booms quieter, NASA completed a series of tests. They set up almost 10 ground recording system units over a 30-mile area of California desert. The tests included F-15 and F-18 aircraft. which conducted 20 supersonic passes with speeds ranging from Mach 1.15 to Mach 1.4 and at altitudes ranging from 40,000 feet to 53,000 feet. Three out of those 20 passes involved an F-18 conducting a special inverted dive maneuver to produce a quiet sonic boom, with one getting as quiet as 67 perceived level decibels. In addition to the United States, Great Britain and France have had their equal share of putting time, money, and effort into making supersonic commercial flights possible. In fact, these countries together built the first supersonic passenger carrying commercial airplane, a technological masterpiece known as Concorde which made its first flight on March 2nd, 1969. The Concorde could attain a maximum cruising speed of 2,179 kilometers per hour, or Mach 2.04, ultimately reducing the flight time between London and New York to almost three hours. After its revelation as the world's first scheduled supersonic aircraft, Concorde was flown to several destinations worldwide. However, its noise and operating expense limited its service. In 2003, the financial losses led both British Airways and Air France to cease Concorde operations all over the world. However, there was a blessing in disguise. This development proved that European governments and manufacturers could cooperate in complex ventures and ensured that Europe would remain at the technological forefront of aerospace development.
The future of supersonic flight took a big hit with the retirement of the Concorde. However, its heir, the Boom XB-1, held the reins and revived its legacy. Boom XB-1, or Baby Boom, is a one-third scale tri-jet supersonic demonstrator designed by Boom Technology as part of the development of the Boom Overture supersonic transport airliner. In 2022, the XB-1 conducted a low-speed taxi test to officially inaugurate its flight testing phase. This was followed by medium-speed and high-speed taxi tests, during which the XB-1 accelerated to a speed of 140 knots, which is almost the same as its takeoff speed. The XB-1 features three General Electric J85 engines, which deliver a combined thrust of 12,300 pounds and allow the aircraft to maintain a speed of Mach 2.2 with over 1,200 miles of range. On March 22, 2024, Boom XB-1 safely and successfully executed its first flight at the Mojave Air and Spaceport in Mojave, California. In addition, a T-38 aircraft took off to chase and monitor the XB-1 in the air. Boom is expected to roll out its first Overture aircraft in 2026 and introduce it to service by 2029. For its production, the company built a special Overture Super Factory which is expected to be at least 40% more energy efficient than similar manufacturing facilities. With the building now complete, Boom is focusing on starting the production. To expedite the process, the company is procuring and installing tooling in the super factory, beginning with an advanced test cell unit which will be used to develop manufacturing processes, optimize the flow of the assembly line, and prepare staff for overture production. The development phase of an aircraft is challenging, and it sometimes leads to serious problems in its design and overall system. To avoid this, the engineers build what's known as an iron bird to test and verify critical aircraft systems. It is a ground-based test rig used for prototyping and integrating aircraft systems during the development of new aircraft designs. Different aircraft systems are installed into the Iron Bird, so their functions can be tested both individually and collectively with other systems. The Boom has planned to develop an Overture Iron Bird, a full-scale model that will be used to test and integrate Overture's flight systems, software, and hardware components that will actually move. Overture's Iron Bird would be located at Boom's new 70,000-square-foot facility, called the Iron Bird. This facility features Systems Integration Labs, SIL, which include the Iron Bird test model, and fully functional flight deck simulators. Supersonic flight plays a vital role in shaping both military capabilities and commercial aviation. From the SR-71 to the X-59 and future concepts, technological advancements in this field are key to enhancing speed, efficiency, and sustainability. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.